2009 and 10, we recreated the downtown zone, combining a few different zones that were a mixture of uses, some residential, some commercial, some industrial, into what we now see as the central business district. But we didn't look into specific designs for buildings. That was a whole different level that we hadn't anticipated as part of that project, nor did we actually fund as part of the scope for that project. As years have gone by, we've seen more development downtown, and that development has come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. One of the things that I think makes Dover great is that diversity of building stock. We're almost 400 years old, and as we've seen, development over that time has occurred in very different ways. The downtown zone now reaches from exit seven at the southerly end at the intersection of Locust Street and Central Avenue, and reaches all the way up along the Central Avenue spine to approximately Oak Street. In that area, there's a variety of sub-districts, and what we want to do is take a look at those sub-districts and create a pattern, or at least a pattern book for those various districts, that gives some guidance and gives some guidelines to developers. One of the other aspects of this project is really looking at creating a diversity of housing stock focused primarily on housing. There is an area in there called the missing middle, which allows for four units, five units, six units, they don't always have to be in a colonial box. They could be in a courtyard style. They could be uh, looking like a Victorian. We want to really encourage some adaptive reuse of existing structures, but then creation from the ground up of some of these newer pro uh, property, infill properties, to really fit in with those neighborhoods. We were fortunate to be involved um, nearly 10 years ago, working on the central business district and on, on the regulations that are now in place here in the city. So to come back now, having seen some projects actually implemented within the district, and to engage with the public in thinking about the role that architectural guidelines could play and, and what type of housing may actually be missing um, that would fit in with the pattern of development that Dover would like to see, that's really exciting. And so this project, so far, we've talked about uh, numerous ways that we'll be engaging with the public over the, over the coming months. I think what we expect to learn most are how people see different parts of the central business district as distinctly different. So having us understand how there are these sub areas um, that have their own character, their own density, maybe um, architectural elements that stand out there that maybe aren't seen elsewhere in the city and to get some insight from them about architectural elements that they would like to see replicated in new design, uh, things they'd like to see preserved that really lend themselves to providing the, the character and the context that is Dover. I think the fact that the, the city has already developed some architectural design guidelines for the waterfront area is wonderful because that gives us a, a starting point to start to look at how do, does Dover view itself, how does it view some of the distinctly different architectural elements to then go from an optional design guideline to something that can be incorporated into the land use codes, into the zoning, into the site plan, um, that's part of this process is to try to figure out what elements belong there and what elements are really more educational and guide, guidance documents for um, would-be developers or redevelopers working here in Dover. When the city adopted the Central Business District regulations um, back in 2009-10, um, there was a, a lot of discussion about placement of buildings, buildings being placed near closer to the back of the sidewalk and parts of the city, having a relationship with the street, but it doesn't end there. And so what we also want to be thinking about are what are the other elements that make a street enticing for pedestrians? How do the public spaces, the streets and the sidewalks, actually relate to the buildings that are there? So things like street trees and the placement of, of places where people can gather, benches and other amenities are really important to this. So we'll be using a visual preference survey in a couple of different formats to allow people to see images of buildings and see different types of architecture and give us an idea of what they like and what they feel no longer fits in Dover or has maybe never fit in Dover. And one of the ways we do that is we'll be using some examples from outside of the city. There may be examples from Dover, but there'll be a number of examples from other New Hampshire, other New Hampshire communities um, so that people can start to give us some direction of what they'd like to see more of in the future. And so that way the development guidelines, the design guidelines can actually be um, crafted with that in mind to try to understand the context that people like. It's, it's hard to talk about this 
and not use imagery and not give a chance for people to just intuitively show us what they like or don't like. They may not be able to explain why, um, but it allowed us to, to sort of crowdsource from the community what types of things would be most favorable. So we'll be doing this by bringing this visual preference survey out to some of the public events here in the downtown over the summer, as well as developing an online component so that folks can at their leisure um, from their own home, from their own computer, interact. Um, we'd like to provide multiple ways to get feedback from people and to be able to get that feedback a couple times throughout the process, knowing that people are busy and we want to interact with them and, and let them see the evolution of this so that hopefully they're invested in the final product. This is a good time to look at these architectural guidelines because in Dover's recent history, we've really started about 10 years ago to get into a redevelopment phase. A lot of our quote unquote undeveloped area is gone, it's been gone. And now over the past five to 10 years, we've seen over $30 million of private reinvestment in the downtown in the form of new buildings. Some of them have been removal of old buildings and new construction on their sites. Some of them have been infill on underutilized vacant parcels. We're gonna to continue to see that occurring. Dover is, is continuing to be an attractive place to do business, to build buildings, to really keep our, our vibrant downtown engaged and, and growing. And so we, we looked back and we said it's been eight years since we created the Central Business District Zone, the, the form-based code uh, context sensitive zone. And it's a good time to step back and evaluate and look at ways that we can continue to improve and continue to engage the public to be invested in how their community grows.